Sure, it may look like a bad hair day to you, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a great tutorial. We're gonna put together some really fun and easy squares directional using my favorite new print from the great outdoors, Portofino. Hello everybody and welcome back to another fantastic tutorial right here at Making It Fun. I am your host Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. It's excellent to see all of you out there and yes, I am having fun with the big hair because I couldn't do anything else about it. But I really wanted to portray this beautiful new fabric collection that had just started shipping out to your local quilt shops and your online retailers. It's called Portofino and it's really, really fun. So let me just kind of take a moment and show you some of these beautiful designs from Michael Miller Fabrics. Of course, I love it because it's beach related and you know I'm a surfer at heart. Well, I'm a surfer regardless. I'm out there as much as I can be. So it's really fun, and as I start to show you some of these really fat, cool fabrics, I'm gonna come back through them again, because I really wanna talk about today's lesson plan. And today's lesson plan, if you see over here on the awesome design wall, we're gonna do a scrappy patchwork using a very simple rectangle and two squares, but I wanna show you how to do it handling directional fabrics. Now, stick around. If this looks too scrappy or disorganized or too cluttered for some of you out there, you're maybe right. I don't want to say right or wrong because some of us love this scrappy feel and some of us have the need for sashing or some sort of fabric that breaks up the blocks. So stick with me till the end of today's video. I'll show you how to put in sashing as well if you need that alternative to add a little extra impact to your awesome theme fabrics like Portofino here. Look at these wonderful little beach houses. I just feel like I should have like one of those belt plugs on and like the little hat and the like the full body bathing suit. I just, I love this stuff. Maybe an inner tube around my waist or something, right? So as you look at these fabrics, you can see that they are, like I said, very tropical, very beach theme related. Um, now, as we go back through them, I want to talk about direction. So maybe I'll stop here and we'll go backwards through these. Direction in fabric can sometimes be a challenge for us quilters because of this random nature of assembly we want to do. So if you look at a fabric like this, the waves, yes, it comes in two awesome colors. This, in my opinion, is very directional. Be wonderful little binding as well, but this fabric, I'm gonna wanna see it kinda like a curling wave in the quilt. Now, a stripe fabric, like you see here, we have it in two colors to coordinate with Portofino, is obviously directional, but which direction you put it in, you can see I've got some horizontal and I've got some vertical already as we're getting started on the design wall. So yes, a stripe is directional, but you choose the direction. A wave print like this is directional and it kind of chooses the direction. Let's come into our housing stripe. This is definitely vertical orientation. It's got stripes, it's got words, it's got structure. So this is gonna only be able to handle one way in the project. Really cool fabric though, right? Okay, so then, and we also did the houses in a couple of just kind of all over prints, but if you look, they're still directional if you're using the dark, the lighter blue or the uh, white colors. So everything's still directional here. We're getting to a point, I promise. This is what we refer to as a tossed fabric, right? So if you look at the little buckets, the little uh, handles on our pails, they are going in different directions. So a project, or excuse me, a fabric like this is very easy to put into a scrappy project because you're not concerned about the orientation of the way the blocks and the squares work out, okay? So this is what we refer to as a tossed, or maybe some folks will call this an all over print. Okay, and then we've got these cute little bathing suits and hats, and I love the little popsicles, right? Again, three colors. We've got the navy and the, kind of the aqua and the white, but in this one, again, very directional. All of the items basically are heading this way, uh, very vertical the way I've got it set up. So now let's take this whole concept of directional fabrics, but a scrappy project, and add one more element for all of you out there that love your pre-cuts. Now, please, you need to listen very carefully. I don't want to get in trouble for this. These are 10 inch squares of Portofino that I made myself. So they are pre-cut by me. These are not available pre-cut uh, at your local retailers or on your online quilt shops, okay? Michael Miller does not make pre-cuts 10 inch squares of Portofino but I know so many of you have 10 inch squares 
that are also directional and maybe as you got home and you started to go through the pieces, you were disappointed or frustrated to find that maybe it was gonna be a bigger challenge for the project you wanted to use. So that's where today's lesson plan starts, is what happens when we've got all of these things. I'm gonna use 10 inch squares today so that it carries over to that bigger lesson plan of how to use your pre-cuts, but no, I do not have 10 inch squares of Portofino. That's the part you're supposed to be listening to. I've heard you like it when I slow down. I heard you like it when the lesson is very methodical. So let's try that. Now that we're getting into the sewing part of today's program, we're gonna take all of our prints, our 10 inch squares, and I'm gonna start by laying them. Let's do about six at a time. And I'm gonna lay them all in an orientation so that this is the top for me. Okay, so this is the tossed, so there is no real top. And as I'm doing this, I wanna be very cautious. I'm lining up all of my edges because I will be cutting these into a rectangle and two squares as soon as I'm done. Now let's make this a fun lesson as well. So I'm gonna quickly dive through here and um, pick a couple of different fabrics. Okay, so let's use some very directional fabrics for the rest of this. Okay, so here is a directional with the wonderful little houses along the beach there and the lighthouse. The definite directional, we'll call this our C stripe, right? Not wonderful. And then down in here, and we also, while I'm doing this, I'm kind of thinking about constructing a few blocks at a time. So I hope you notice I picked a variety of shades or colors. So I've got some darks, some mediums, and some lights in this stack already. And also all of my directions, this is the top. So any of the directional print, this is the top for me as I get started. Now, as we dive in, let's just take a ruler. These are 10 inch squares. So I'm gonna use a ruler that's at least five inches wide. And I'm gonna set this right here on my five inch mark. And when I cut this right now, if I cut through here, I have created a five inch by 10 inch rectangle and I wanna save those. So let's look at what happened with just those pieces. You can see that that is directional. That stripe stayed, this is why it's important, right? So everything is still directional, no problem. Okay, now these two squares to be, they're a rectangle right now. I'm gonna rotate it so I'm being good, safe management, and I'm gonna cut again at that five inch mark. And when I cut across here, the directional prints are still directional. See that? Our stripes are still okay. Our houses are still okay, our seashells are still okay. Everything is okay there. We can do the exact same thing in the opposite direction. So let's do that. Okay, let's do it quick though, so that you can see what happens. I promise to slow down and I'm already starting to speed back up, aren't I? So let's line those squares up really nice. Oh, fun, I love this stripe. Let's put a stripe in there. And remember, this stripe doesn't matter which way you put it. And I was looking for some more of my houses. Here we go. that one, and then just let's use that other shade of those houses so you can really see what's going on here. And now, remember, in the first example, I put the ruler here and I cut a five inch this way. So I'm going to encourage you so that you get a more random look in your rectangles, the ones that are the bigger pieces over here on the design wall, see, I've got some going horizontally, or vertically, excuse me, up and down, and the other one's going side to side. I can't remember which direction that is. So we started on this stack this way. So for this stack, we're actually just gonna go ahead and rotate here, five inch mark. This could be a little bit of a dangerous cut for some of us. So let's go ahead and take a second now that we know this is still the top. We're just gonna rotate, making sure none of our squares moved. Now we're gonna find our five inch on this line here, going ahead and cutting it this way. And now what I've effectively created is a nice long row of some of those directional fabrics, such as those houses. But I wanna show you what's happened to our stripe. So this stripe right here is still long when I take this piece and now I'm gonna cut it. These are the two squares to be from the rectangle. I cut that there and I still have everything upright, 
just in a different orientation so I can use it back in the scrappy very simply. So that's what we're going to do. Let's build a few squares, make it really easy in construction. If you can even see what's going on after the mess I've already created. So let's do that. Let's start with one of our fun, um, very, very orientational fabrics. And then I'm going to take another one of these here and I'm just going to lay it in uh, right sides up. And then I'm going to dig around and I'm going to find yet another piece real quick here. And I'm going to check all of my orientation and I'm going to make sure that these are pointing up and this is pointing up. And we're going to just start by constructing the two squares. So coming over here, I'm just going to lay them right sides together, head on over to the sewing machine. Got a quarter inch seam allowance today, a little edge guide on there. I'm gonna take a nice easy stitch, quarter inch. We're gonna do an all quarter inch seams where you are quilting today. Now I really want my blocks to look crisp and square before I start assembling them. So at this moment, when I just have my two squares, I'm gonna to come to the ironing board and you've not heard me say this before or anybody else say this, we wanna to press to the darker fabric. So hold your dark fabric up in the air and you're gonna go ahead and just set that seam and let the iron slide over the top there. And then effectively you've set that seam and made a nice pressing, okay? And I've pressed under the dark fabric so I don't have a bleed over here. And now you can see because of the seam allowance, I've actually consumed that half of an inch. So if any of this or maybe the words or something were very important, of course you could orient the two small squares against the rectangle in one side or the other. For me, I'm just gonna go ahead and push it to an edge. I'm gonna now flop it over, right sides together. And now I'm going to attach that rectangle to the two squares. Quarter inch seam allowance. Only thing you really need to pay any attention to is this little seam coming under the presser foot. Sometimes it will be underneath and blind for you. Sometimes it'll be pointing uphill. Sometimes it'll be pointing downhill, depending on how you're constructing your blocks. Now, before I explain how you're constructing your blocks and what that really, really means for design, let's finish this job at hand. Now that I'm over here with my two squares and the rectangle, I'm gonna press up into the rectangle. It's just gonna make the fabric lay so much nicer. So again, I'm gonna apply a little heat, a little pressure. Okay. And now as this comes off, all I need to do is trim it. And of course you would be doing lots of these at a time. So when I made these pieces, I did the squares, then the rectangles, then the trimming. Uh, I wanted to show you one step at a time here. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it all across the seam that I made and the seam here that I made, making sure that the block itself is staying nice and square. And we're just gonna trim off that little uh, half inch that was left over and you're not gonna be able to do much other than decorate your floor with that one. So anyways, here's a square and I'll rotate it so it's in the orientation. And back to the sentence I was saying over at the sewing machine is, not all your blocks will be constructed the same. Well, yeah, they are constructed physically like two squares and then the rectangle, but you're not always gonna have your rectangle right up here. And that's what I want you to focus on. So let's take a couple of minutes and make some more fun designs. Just need to push all this. Who makes this kind of mess in their sewing room anyways? So at any rate, let's talk about some fun, right? So what I'd like to do, and I'll work of maybe four to five blocks at a time, whatever I've got the space for, I can see what's going on. So I start with my rectangles. I'm gonna pull a rectangle here and let's pull a rectangle here. Maybe you can see all of that. And then let's go over to our vertical pile too. So here's a rectangle vertical style and here's a rectangle. We'll do this fun tossed one here. So we've got some different colors, some different shades is what I'm also looking for. Now I've got all of those squares I made, which is really fun. So I start by laying out the rectangles, but all of the squares count. So I have all my squares in a pile. And then what I'm gonna to try to do is introduce new colors. So if this is the navy and I've got the aqua and I'm gonna to try to introduce new prints as well. So as I bring this in here, I notice, oh, those are the same prints. So let's just use this house print down here with those fun bikinis, okay? And then I'm gonna take a, and go ahead and say, oh, here's the stripe. I'm gonna drop the stripe print in up here because that's a nice contrast of color over here. So you can see I'm just kind of going around, but what I was starting to point out is I don't want to always have the rectangles on the same side. So you should take the time to relocate a couple of those rectangles as we go so that we can build in a little more character. Let's see what I can come up with. So now all directions are heading in the same. That's really cool. 
That one's going to turn out really nice as well. I've got the three colors, the three different fabrics there. Try to avoid using the exact three, same three fabric combinations each and every time. Uh, and then last thing I'll point out here, I'm going to use this stripe. I'm just playing, like I said, again, with these four blocks right now. But if this one's a horizontal stripe, then we'll just make this one a vertical stripe. And it's also in a different location within the block as well. So then once you have all of these pieces, then basically it's the same kind of construction. You're just going to come on back to your two squares, fold them over, stitch them together. Real easy. And I don't believe I gave real clear instructions a moment ago. What I said is I'm doing them in stacks, but that's not really true. I'm doing the design in stacks and then I'm immediately doing a stitch, a press. So into the dark fabrics again, and you can iron on top of other fabrics. It just makes them flatter. Okay. And then like, where'd my rectangle go is what I'm thinking. So that's why I bring it back over here and I make sure I find that rectangle, line it back up, drop it on. And now, as you can see, as I go to stitch this on, this is what I meant. Like sometimes that seam will be blind. You won't see it go by the camera because we're sewing on the entire rectangle piece. So I just need to be attention to what's on the bottom side. Come on through, cut your threads, and we'll go ahead and do the same process, except for I'm not going to be trimming anymore on this cutting board because you can see that it's an absolute covered in fabric situation. And so I shouldn't be cutting until I clean that up. I want to press this rectangle and I want to start talking about some of that sashing or some of that layout and orientation. So I tell you what, follow me here to the design board and I'm going to show you a little closer what you're really looking at. Now, as I was mentioning a moment ago, just take a note, please. You've got the nice tall rectangle here. You've got a long rectangle here. And then I'm also trying in my design pieces to not have too many of the exact same fabrics or colors touching each other because I do want this real scrappy look. So as you look at this and you see this, you can tell it's it's going to make a nice project, but over time it is going to become very redundant and repetitive. So one of the things we can certainly do is we can add in our wonderful sashing. And sashing, and you're probably wondering, why doesn't Rob mention the basics yet today? This is the great use of like our basics or our solids or um, a quiet fabric, a fabric that's going to go between the blocks and allow the blocks to gain extra conversation, extra energy. So we want to pick something that matches but doesn't distract or dominate. So even on our collections, we like to offer suggestions and Hashdot is one of our basics at Michael Miller Fabrics. So we have these five different colors like the stream and the red. I think this one's called Midnight. Yes, lipstick. I think I got it. And then of course, I'm going to use Malibu today because Malibu, as you can see here, just is a perfect color. They're all perfect colors. We've chosen them to go with this line, but this is the one that I like. It, it, it says Rob all over it and it's going to match in nicely. So then one of the things I've done, because these blocks are finishing at nine and a half inch squares, I'm going to cut my sashings at one and a half inches. So you start with a one and a half inch by the width of the goods, and you're going to want to keep as many of these, the length or the width, the 45 as possible. Okay. So we're going to need some that are like that. And then you're also going to need several that are the one and a half inches. And these are going to be by nine and a half inches. So let's go back onto the design wall and kind of rearrange this because most of you would be making a much larger quilt than this one. This one's for Barbie, of course. And so, um, or uh, maybe uh, Mike, we'll say that way. That way we're not being gender specific. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So here we go. Let's take these squares apart. So I'm going to square, take that square out of there real quick, take this square out of there real quick. So now you can actually see what's happening to the project itself. So what would be happening is if you were sewing these together, I'm just going to synthetically do it today, but if you were sewing these together, I would want you to put a sashing on, we're going to call it the right hand side of each block. So if I had a sashing there and I had a sashing there to start with, when I start to stitch those blocks back together, then this is going to line up to this. And it will have already had it sashing with it. Then you'll bring in a new square like this. And of course, it would have it sashing with it as well. 
And then I should have also mentioned, but what I normally do is I go back in and I add a sashing back on the beginning strip, the beginning row right here. Because what we really want to do is we want to have a sashing a block, a sashing a block, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason we have these really long strips is the long strips are going to fit in here so we don't have as many seam allowances, right? So you would then put that sashing in, you would sew that in, and then you would bring your next blocks in. And of course, I don't think I've got sashing left, but I would have had a sashing here and a sashing here and a sashing here. And you can really start to see the way that breaks up the block and breaks up the project. Now, I do like to play with proportions and ratios, and so I want to have a narrow sashing and a larger block. Uh, I don't want the sashing to become so wide that it starts to affect the block. So uh, just as a reminder, the square is finished at nine and a half inches, right? Nine and a half inches. And then my sashings were cut at one and a half inches. You could most certainly go down to one or even three quarters of an inch, but you're not going to show very much. If you're brand new to quilting, remember you lose a quarter inch on both sides. So even my one and a half inch sashing will only be showing at one inch when we are all done. So I hope you learned something wonderful today and a really easy, approachable way to handle some of these directional 10 inch squares or these directional fabrics. I know with quilting, it is something we want to do all day long, but sometimes the design is, is the challenge itself. So when you're working on one of those really large designs and you're processing all that graph paper and you've got swatches and samples everywhere and you can't quite break that barrier, take a moment, walk away from that project and do some basic simple sewing, something like this. Make a quick little baby quilt, a quick little fun quilt you can give to somebody, keep it in your vehicle to hand a, to somebody that you, you love or you know visiting, something like that. Work like this really helps us to grow our skills. So hopefully you learned something from me here today. If not, I will be back in a week or so with yet another video. Until then, have a blessed day. We'll see you next time at Making It Fun. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.